As many of you know, I was sponsored by Kite, which is a machine learning based code autocompletion tool with other useful features. One of their main competitors, at least in the area of autocompletion, is Tab9. Kite may be known as something else when you see this video, so I'll update the title if this occurs and the software is still the same. When I was initially sponsored by Kite, I was unaware of Tab9, and I only heard of Tab9 once they offered to sponsor me. I wanted to give both a fair shot to see which one was better for my use case. I'll say right up front that I found Tab9 to fit my use case better than Kite, so as of this video I am no longer sponsored by Kite, and I'll be removing all the links from my descriptions. I also want to be very clear in saying that Kite is also a very good product and worth considering depending on your specific use case, which I'll get into a bit in this comparison video. This video is not sponsored, and neither Kite nor Tab9 will see this video before it's released or have any control over what I say here. However, they both gave me keys for their respective pro versions, neither of which asked me for a review though. I used both Kite and Tab9, both free and paid versions, over the last several months. I used Kite for a bit over four months, mixed between both free and paid versions, as you guys may have seen in my streams, and I've used Tab9 for a bit over three months. So I feel like I have a bit more experience with both than most people making videos on this subject. Before I get into the more objective data I have for the comparison, I'd like to go over some of the main differences between Kite and Tab9. Kite has a much broader scope of functionality than Tab9. One of the main features of Kite is that it has built-in functionality for documentation. It has an optional extra window that pops up that shows you documentation for whatever you're working with. The autocomplete option pop-up also lists things like arguments when you're filling out functions. There are a bunch of small things Kite does to help you keep your bearings when coding like showing basic information about something when you hover over it. Tab9, on the other hand, is pretty much just an autocomplete plugin. In my experience, Kite and Tab9 both use about 800 megabytes of RAM. I read that some people found a difference. It may just be that the info was out of date, or it may have something to do with my configuration. For the free versions, Tab9 provides significantly more pro completions than Kite, although it's not really pro because it's just completions. If you code in small sessions of 30 minutes or so, Tab9's free version may actually have enough completions for you as it allows up to 30 completions in the free version. In terms of pricing, Kite was $16.58 a month when billed annually. I say was because Kite software was recently acquired by another company. They are no longer accepting new users as of the making of this video. I suspect they'll rebrand, but supposedly they're using the same software, so my comments should still be valid. They're also still technically paying me for the sponsorship stuff, so it's not like I'm switching because they're not paying me or something. They also offered a cheaper deal for Kite if you're using it for personal use. And I'm pretty sure it came down to about $10 a month, but I'm having a hard time finding the page on Internet Archive. Tab9 is slightly more expensive, coming in at $12 a month, but I know many of my viewers are students. I'm a senior in university myself. Tab9 recently became free for students as long as you have a student email with a .edu domain, so I suspect that about half my audience can actually get it for free. Now for the more objective data. I typed out a basic Pygame project with a moving red square with both Kite and Tab9 on the free and paid versions while recording the number of key presses. It's worth noting that shift is counted as a key press, and I made a couple mistakes and unnecessary presses with shift, however I read the, the test if the human error caused a noticeable difference in the results. When testing the free versions, I didn't use the pro completions with the free version of Kite, but I used the normal completions with the free version of Tab9 since it's more difficult to run out on. I tried to make Tab9's free version run out by spamming completions, but I couldn't get it to run out for some reason, I'm not sure why. With that in mind, the free version comparison isn't exactly fair, but the pro version comparison later should be more fair. So first let's talk about the baseline. I typed the script in 450 key presses with no autocomplete. These recordings will be sped up to different speeds to fit the script of this video. Other than that, there's not much to comment on here, so I'll move on to the next test. I figured it'd be appropriate to compare the autocomplete software to Adam's built-in autocomplete to give an idea of how the machine learning based software compares to the average autocomplete. In the process I was quickly reminded why I turned off Adam's autocomplete. It added unnecessary code that I had to delete and ended up taking 505 key presses, which is more than the baseline. Next up is the free version of Kite, coming in at 364 key presses. This is a solid 20% key presses saved, which isn't bad for a free product. In these tests I type slower to use the autocomplete options when applicable. So in normal use cases, the improvement will probably be a little bit less unless you've got quick reflexes. Kite Pro ended up taking 277 key presses, 
which is a huge improvement. It saved me from almost 40% of the key presses. It's a very solid product on its own, which is why I was previously sponsored by them. Now for tab 9. With the free version of tab 9, I was able to type the script in 220 key presses. It was able to outperform Kite Pro primarily due to the longer suggestions it provided that were surprisingly accurate. 220 keystrokes means that I ended up using less than half the keystrokes I would have had I not used it in autocomplete. With tab 9's free version out of the way, it's time to talk about tab 9 Pro. Tab 9 Pro supposedly uses a better machine learning model and trains on your code. The key press count came in at 208, which is within the margin of error relative to the free version. It felt about the same, but I must say that I could tell that Tab 9 Pro was adjusting to the way I coded when I used it for my own personal work, which is very useful. So it gets a bit better over time. I believe Kite Pro does the same thing, but a lot of info has been removed from their website as of now. Tab 9 Pro has a semantic completion mode which had similar results, so I didn't bother to include it. Now that I've finished the semi-objective portion of the comparison, I'd like to get to my final thoughts. While Kite is arguably better if you're learning new libraries and working with stuff unfamiliar to you, I feel that Tab 9's completions are significantly better. From what I can tell, this is primarily because Tab 9 attempts to provide longer suggestions. By the time I've read Kite's suggestions, I've typed a good portion of the suggestion itself. So they don't save me as much as Type 9's longer suggestions. I also work with libraries I'm very familiar with 90% of the time, so Kite's documentation functionality isn't super useful for me, although it may be useful for you. In my opinion, the better fit heavily depends on what type of programming you do and how fast you type. Although for those of you who are students, the free offer for Tab 9 Pro is an offer that can't really be beaten. While I've been testing out both Kite and Tab 9 for my personal projects at home, I've been going without them at work so that I'm switching back and forth constantly, and I must say that there's a stark difference between using machine learning based autocomplete and not using it. Everything feels slower and more tedious without it. I was skeptical on the concept when Kite first reached out to me last year, but I'm sold on the idea now. I hope this comparison was useful. I'll likely be doing some sort of collaboration with Tab9 soon, but just know that it is something that I legitimately use. You'll be seeing me use it in my streams and such. This is also why I couldn't live stream a lot in the past couple months is because I was trying out Tab9 and I couldn't be streaming Tab9 while it's sponsored by Kite. So yeah, I'll probably be live streaming more. I hope I'll see you guys later.